Hello and welcome to Kismet Rising. So this is your weekly oracle card guidance and I know I'm pretty late. I try to get them out on a Sunday and if I fail, I get them out on a Monday. And if I really, really fail, I get them out uh, at the latest on a Tuesday morning. But I'm actually, it's Tuesday night where I am right now and I'm only starting it uh, right now. I do hope that this guidance comes in handy and that you are able to gain from it as you go along in the week. And so this week we are using the Maori Oracle and I'm very happy to be using this deck. It has a very different feeling to the other decks that I usually work with. I usually get a very bubblegum feel from the from the cards and this card has a really a, a very different feeling. And it basically draws on ancestral wisdom from the Maori people. So I am looking forward to working with these cards with you and also to be able to to channel the messages that come through and I'm quite interested to see what comes through. So we have three options today. We have this turquoise that's here and we have this um, tiger's eye and that's a carnelian. Please go ahead and make a selection and you, as usual you can go down to the timestamp um, below or in the comment section and uh, you can go directly to your reading. So for those of you who have chosen the first option here which is this turquoise, it's a tiny little stone actually, um, we're asking what is it that you need to know as you go along in this week? What is the message that you've come here to hear? Feel like these cards need a very sh a proper shuff shuffle and I think this is your card so I'm quite sure I'll be butchering the pronunciations of these uh, words because I have no knowledge of the Maori language and so I'm going to call it waita typo and um, I'm going to talk about the the energy of this card with you today but what I'd like to do first is actually read what is um, what is in the book that the accompanying book because there's a little uh, note that comes with each of the the cards so I'm going to go ahead and do that for you it, there's a guide to the pronunciation here it's Weta Taipo and it's called Cave Weta that is the pronounce that's the actual uh, translation of it Cave Weta so it says the fears are unfounded and so it's named specifically for its ugliness. It looks dangerous and fierce, but truthfully, the waiter is harmless. The great spike at its tail is for laying eggs. It can bite, but most likely won't. The waiter typo doesn't even hunt much, preferring to scavenge off the cave floor at night. Nor will it come out on moonlit nights, for there is too much light for it to feel safe. So that was your the message that's that's in there. And I think that actually is quite interesting because it talks about being afraid uh, and not actually having a good reason to be afraid, uh, seeing something for being more dangerous than what it is. I feel that more now than ever, the fears that we have or the the ideas that we have in our head are actually being uh, magnified and becoming a reality for us and I talked about this previously as well in in the energy forecast as well as in previous oracle card guidance readings that it's it's an indeed a very interesting time in terms of manifestation one can create what is what one believes and this card kind of hones in on and talking about how one can create environment of fear when it isn't one to be feared it's simply the world as it is and even if something looks scary it isn't as scary or it isn't as scary so I would say look at where it is that there is something that's quite obviously looking scary in your life and quite obviously uh, bringing you down or 
behaving in a way that makes you behave differently to what you would behave and try to strip that away and ask yourself well if that wasn't there what would you be doing so one example of this would be well if COVID wasn't there what would you be doing now and I would say that you know if you have difficulties in in terms of your 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 job certainty or your financial well-being etc then see this as this as this insect as this um waiter and see it for something that is actually looks that looks scary but isn't scary see it as something that is actually simply there at this moment it's crossing your path and there's a greater reason for why it's happening for whatever your circumstances are there is a greater reason for all of this to be happening exactly as they are happening right now we are living in in such a synchronistic time and whatever is happening in your life right now is meant to happen in your life there are great karmic lessons to be learned and i feel that that you encountering this card at this moment you encountering the waiter typo is actually to to let you know that you don't need to be afraid you don't actually need to to worry so much and that everything is really working out and that we are all in harmony so whereas we may think that we are not in harmony at a given moment we in fact are in harmony the waiter typo is in harmony in its environment in its world and you are in harmony in your world and you need not be moved so deeply by that which is outside of you which appears scary which appears like it could be attacking you or it appears like it could be menacing in some way i think this card is also a reminder of that design of nature it's all part of the course it's all part of a particular ecosystem it all fits in perfectly with each other and one needs to trust in the greater picture in the design of it all one needs to trust in the perfection of the world as it is at large and the perfection of life in the way in which it comes to unravel itself the rhetoric at the moment is very, very much about fear and so it is not surprising that this card is actually a stepping forth and talking about fears that are unfounded it is that which one needs to be aware of where are your fears unfounded and where are your thoughts anxiety ridden and where is it that you can free yourself from that and actually just allow yourself to take a break from it all even if it means stepping away from your responsibilities briefly to be able to go inward and allow yourself to bathe in an, a space of of healing and just being in a more relaxed space this will actually help you quite a lot at this moment I feel like one of the things that one needs to do right now is actually just allow your body to relax and allow yourself to you know to have um some kind of thing like uh, a soak in a bath or to allow your your joints and your your muscles to to just relax. I feel also here that being alert and watching out and just um paying attention to all the news or everything that's around just being 100% on alert is actually quite draining and it can take quite a lot out of a person so it's actually a card that's talking to me also about switching off and you know in order to be able to switch off you need to be able to trust and to be able to trust in the design of nature and you know human beings are also part of nature and regardless of what harm or or evil some um may appear to be doing we are still all part of a bigger picture that is in fact moving us into a greater state of knowing and a greater state of being and it's up to us at every moment to make choices to do that so i feel here the choice that you are advised to make this week is to step away from that which is too jarring from that which causes you anxiety from that which puts you on edge from that which is actually causing you 
to be stiff and tense in your body and move towards a space of relaxation and allow that energy to flow in you. I want to say that there's one other message that comes through here. Um, it's as if you are in a state right now which is um, not as fluid as it could be. And the, the message here for you, if you are feeling this specifically, is to actually relax and, and allow that flow in your body. So doing things like uh, Qigong or Tai Chi or um, working with flow in your life will actually help to be able to unlock something that you need to express that will unlock something that needs to be said it's almost like what you would say as a result of working with flow would be very different from what you would say right now so step away from what it is that is scaring you right now or causing you any degree of anxiety and allow yourself to authentically uh, channel from yourself whatever it needs to come forth and let it happen organically uh, is the message here. So I hope that that message has helped you. And I hope that as you go along for the rest of this week, that you are able to gain something from this. I am wishing that you are safe and that you stay healthy and be blessed. So for those of you who've chosen this tiger's eye here, it's a very beautiful one, I want to say. Um, I don't know if you can actually see that here, but it's just got so much of character and there's this little blue streak that goes along here. So we asking, what is it that you need to know this week? Or what is your guidance for the week as we go along? Oh, I think it's this one already. It feels ready. Oh, wow. So I was shuffling the cards uh, just to kind of get the other energy out of it. And this card came through and uh, I somehow thought that it was going to be for the next option. But here it is right now for you. So I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, pronunciation from the book so that I do not destroy the name. And I'm going to read for you the message that is in the book. There's just a, 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 a short little message. And then I will channel the meaning that I have for you. Okay, so this card is pronounced uh, Pau Tukawa. And it translates into native tree. It says, do not fail to value that which you already have. And it reads the following. When the canoe of the Te Arawa people came into sight of the Aioti Roa, in the 14th century, beautiful Pautukawa trees in full bloom were seen along the coast. One of the Riki, Taunini he, stood up in wonder and thinking that the flowers of the Pautukawa would be better, discarded Taiwaki, Taiwakekea, his headdress of red feathers. Upon gaining some of the flowers of the Pautukawa, he was sad to find that the flowers wilted and died too quickly to be used. He did discover the whereabouts of Taiwakaea, but it had been founded by a man named Meihina who would not return it. So I'm really sorry for the poor pronunciations that I have here. I've, I have no, I've not been exposed to the Maori language at all. And so I want to talk about this energy, actually, that we have at present of not being able to appreciate all that we have. And I think that this is something that uh, we've that's always there. It's always what we are facing with what we're faced with and there's so many people who kind of live this as a mantra in their lives always seeing the glass half empty never being able to fully appreciate all that they have and I don't feel like you know one needs to blame them necessarily because um, it's something sometimes one just cannot do that and I feel like this card is talking so much about that because for me what the message is here is that you are so powerful in yourself and you have so much already. You have so much. You're so full of strength compared to many 
around you and it's only for you to realize it and it's only for those for you to actually be able to see that for you to be able to see all that you have that's good around you and in order to be able to do that you need to step out of the perhaps the habit of thinking in a particular way perhaps the habit of seeing things in a particular way um, of thinking and dreaming of things that you wish you could have so I would say that one of the best things to do with this type of guidance is to sit down and write down, um, well, write like a, a gratitude journal. Basically, sit down and write as many things as you can that you feel grateful for right now. And even if you don't particularly think that you are, you know, somebody who's not grateful um, because I feel like this is not something that applies to a particular person, you know. It's not something that, you, you know, you can say, oh, well, this is, um, you know, you're just an ingrate. <laughs> you're just not appreciative of all that you have. I don't think it works like that. I feel that there are moments in our lives when our perception leads us to believe that we have less than we actually have. And so one needs to simply retrain our minds, retrain our thoughts to be able to see what it is that we really have it's able to the ability to really see once again and when we see you know when we see who we are and what we have then we are better able to see those around us and see what they have as well i feel that this card also talks a little bit about being a uh, a bit aggressive or maybe not aggressive but a bit abrasive towards others so where is it that you are perhaps um, taking on a more bullying nature when or towards others than than one needs to be where is it that you are perhaps saying that oh well this person's not good enough or look how stupid they are or look how you know how foolish they are how, how dumb their choices are um, I feel like a lot of people right now have these opinions about their world about the world leaders or their country leaders and I think it's very easy to be able to look at others and to be able to say oh well they're really you know not good enough and they are and they are not doing well and to criticize them but in fact when we criticize others we in fact hurting ourselves because we are not able to see them as they are so regardless of how foolish others are in their choices and how and what you think of their decisions, one needs to be able to see them, to understand them and understand why they are doing this. And I feel that when you are in a state of what this card is talking about, um, Pau Tu Kawa, this actually is talking about the inability to be able to see, the inability to be able to see yourself and therefore the inability to be able to see others. And if you're not able to see yourself, then it's easier to criticize others. It's easier to talk about how poorly um, the president of your country is doing and how poorly whoever is doing and to be able to bring them down and drag them down. Because in fact, what you're actually doing in that moment is that you're bringing yourself down because you're not really able to see where it is that you are beautiful and where it is that you are doing well and where it is that you are part of this picture, of this bigger picture. So I'm not saying any of this to be able to sway you politically in any way, obviously. I'm just using it as an example. And um, I think that basically um, this card talks about how rich you are how um, you're bearing good fruit and how you are very attractive and how you are well and you are good and you belong here and you are part of this world that we are living in. And it asks you to be able to acknowledge that. It asks you to be able to own that and to be able to feel that and feel where it is that you belong and how it is that you belong and allow it to bring a smile to your face allow your circumstances whatever they may be to bring a smile to your face and to be able to appreciate all that you have at this given moment and I feel that from this is going to come a power 
you know, the, the kind of power that's associated with the tiger's eye, for instance, it's going to be able to come forth and, and, and come through you and come out of you and be a form in its own. Uh, it's almost going to take a life of its own outside of you. And I think that one needs to start with acknowledging the beauty in your life and the goodness in your life and all that you have at this moment. And, you know, even if it's simply that you are able to see or that you have motor coordination or that, you know, you're able to have um, Wi-Fi or Internet connection at this moment. These are all things to be grateful for, even no matter how simple they are and no matter how hungry we may be for more. All right. So this is not going to solve the problem of what you want necessarily but it is going to lessen your hunger for what it is that you desire by making you full on what it is that you have so i hope that message has is going to help you as you go along in this week and i hope that you're doing well i hope that you're healthy and thriving and i'm wishing you many blessings so for those of you who've chosen the carnelian year be asking what is it that you need to know as you go along in this week what is it that we need to go know as we go along in this week okay i'm going to go with this card here and it's called the harikeke so i'm going to go ahead and read the explanation for it from the book and then I'm going to talk about the message that I think it is. The card it translates to, or the card caption is, a favorable outcome. And it actually, the harakeke is supposed to be a New Zealand flax. It's a kind of plant. So, yeah, it reads here, the harakeke is a sacred plant and its uses for the Maori are almost unending. Its name means hold fast, and as a fiber, there was nothing that matched it. The leaves are woven into mats, ropes, baskets, sandals, packs, hats, and many other things. They can also be stripped down into a much finer fiber called muka and used to make clothing. It was traditionally gathered by women for these uses, but never while they were menstruating, pregnant, or feeding babies. As a medicine, its uses are also widely varied, from wounds to constipation. There is a very special way in which to gather the leaves of the harikeke. The young shoots come up from the protective inside of the older shoots. The newer shoot is seen as the child. The next layer of leaves going outwards are the parents, and the oldest on the outside, the grandparents. Usually, one would gather from the grandparent leaves. With one exception... One should never pick the young middle shoot, the rito, as it risks damaging the plant. On rare occasions, it was sometimes picked to foretell victory or failure for an expedition, usually a war expedition. If the bottom broke evenly and straight when plucked from the bush, it was a sign of victory to come. So there's a few feelings or thoughts that came to me as I was reading this. And if you've had a yes or no question, I feel that your answer here is definitely a yes. This is a symbol of it being yes. The one thing that came to mind here is that you have so many things that you can do, so many resources that you have at your avail to be able to create anything that you desire and anything that can move things forward in your life. So... I feel here that movement is important, movement in terms of not necessarily physical movement, but movement in allowing things to happen, to not let things stagnate, to actually allow things to to con continuously move. So even if you're not sure of which direction to move in, to be able to at least move in some direction so that there is movement, because in itself, the movement is bringing the favorable outcome. I feel that this plant having many uses, as is stated in the description in the accompanying booklet, as is talking 
a lot about you and you having many attributes to yourself, how creative you are, how diverse you are, how able you are to be able to do so many different things, whether it is physically, whether it is in terms of a creative, create, creative, creativity, or whether it's in terms of being able to manage yourself and manage your emotions, manage your mind, and or whether it's with how you able to apply it to your work and your environment and those around you. So it almost feels here that you are the strength for those around you right now. And I think that, you know, for many of you, the feeling I'm getting is that you don't see yourself necessarily in that way. But I want you to understand that this is a very specific message and it's very clear. You are the strength for those around you. In fact, you may think that those around you are doing fine and that you need them. But in fact, they need you right now because you are this person who's able to give of yourself in this way that this Harakeke card is talking about. Being able to give of yourself abundantly and always and in so many different forms. And this is used perhaps unconsciously or simply energetically by those around you and it contributes to you and to those around you in a really spectacular way. Now, you may not always receive an acknowledgement for th this contribution that you are making. In fact, quite on the to the contrary, you might not receive any acknowledgement. You might even be shunned for that. But regardless of that, your outcome here is favorable. Whatever it is that you choose to do right now, will have a favorable outcome and this is an important message for you at this moment i feel that uh, there's another message here and that is that regardless of the imperfections that accompany the status you need to still push forth regardless of your blemishes or where you feel you're not ready or where you feel insecure or where you feel you haven't done enough as yet, where you feel not prepared enough, it is okay to move forth. There's an, an, also another message here, and I I guess you know who this is for. Um, there's a sense that you will encounter some, some challenges along the way to your favorable outcome, but that is not a reason to turn around and to walk away. It's part of the course, it's part of nature, it's part of the sun burning down on you as you're trying to grow through the earth. And um, that's just part of it. And it's not to be seen as a challenge. Or even if it is seen as a challenge, it's not to deter you in any way. So that feels like a quite an abstract kind of message. And I feel that you know how it applies to you. So I'm just going to leave it at that because I feel like it applies to people in, in different ways. I think there's something else that I want to say here. I feel that there's a part of you that hasn't been really seen or hasn't been really acknowledged for who you are and hasn't been appreciated. And that is still something that's going to come out. You know, you, the real you and your value and all of what you can do in this world is still going to be acknowledged. There's still a space in the future where it belongs, where you can be appreciated for all that you do and where you could make a really valuable contribution to come. So keep that in mind as well as you go along. So I think that's it for today. I hope that those messages have actually been of use for you. And I hope that you're all keeping very well as you go along. And that the world as it is right now is not getting you too down. And um, yes, I am sorry for uh, putting out this Oracle card reading so late this week. I do wish you all very well. And much Love and good health to you all and blessings abound from Kismet Rising.